Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be doing an amplifier and subwoofer install in this 2018 Audi Q3. Now, in this install, we're adding this amp and sub to the existing factory sound system. Let's get started. A couple of things to note, this Q3 does have the upgraded amplified sound system, meaning we do have the Bose factory amplifier. That does simplify a couple of things for us because we're going to be tapping into signal for our own sub and amp at the factory sub in the trunk area. We'll show you what that looks like here in a moment. First things first, let's head to the bench and show you exactly what we need for our install today. Here are the bench, the parts that we're going to need for this install. First and foremost is our amplifier. Now we're going with the CT Sound 700 by one amplifier. Does 700 watts RMS at one ohm. To wire that into the vehicle, we do need an amplifier wiring kit. Now this is a four gauge amplifier wiring kit, complete kit by New Concepts. They make these in both OFC and CCA wire. And then to tap into the factory audio sound system, we're gonna use this um, Pack Audio LOC Pro 7, which allows us to both uh, snag signal from the Bose amplifier as well as generate a remote turn on wire for our amplifier. So the first thing we need to do is start routing our wiring. Now we plan on installing this amplifier in the trunk area close to the factory Bose amp that happens to be by the spare tire. We're gonna run our power wire from under the hood through the body into the trunk area. We will need a ground as well, and we'll need to find a good place for our line out converter. So let's head to the car and get started. All right, so underneath the hood here, our battery is on the driver's side. Positive is on the left, negative is on the right. What we'll need to do is find access through the firewall so we can run our wire to the trunk area. And uh, we're going to build a fuse mount, mount our fuse up underneath the hood, and we'll connect our power wire to that positive stud. Now we need to find firewall access to pass our power wire from the battery area through that firewall into the cabin of the vehicle. Now we have a hanger and we're able to pass it through the existing grommet. Let's jump over to the other side to show you where it passes through. If we move this on over, you see in your main grommet that goes to the firewall there. There, there is this little space that we push this through very thin little piece of rubber and we just continue to push it through until it came out the other side. And essentially we're gonna use this metal hanger to feed our wire through the firewall. So we'll hook our wire to this and be able to pull it right through that firewall into the engine bay pretty easily. So this is where it came out there. Now it took a couple of tries so where I, where I could see it because I didn't want to pull the battery out if I didn't have to. And uh, I saw it poke out there and I grabbed some needle nose pliers and was able to pull this end all the way through. So take your time. It's a little tricky. If you have to pull the battery and battery box out, it'll be a heck of a lot easier, but it's a lot more time consuming. We're able to do it without pulling the battery out. So at this point of time, let's grab our power wire. We're going to tape it. We'll lube up that wire with some simple water so it passes through that grommet pretty easily. And we're going to pull it into the right, engine. So we bay. got our wire taped to the metal hanger and that's going to be our fish we got it all lubed up with some soap and water let's go top side and start pulling it through the firewall so with that wire pulled through what we did is we ran our wire down we came around the fuse panel here and what we did is we created an inline fuse holder we just snagged a bolt down there Put an S-Bend and a piece of ABS plastic and mounted our fuse holder there. Power wire passes through that, through that fuse holder, it goes up, and then we put a little hole here in the side of the battery box. And then we went to the positive post. Obviously the negative is off the battery. While we have our positive post hooked up until the amplifier is fully wired, the way that we got that nut off without shearing anything off is we actually got a file and just filed around the three points, the little divots out there. Make sure it was nice and filed and ground down, and then the nut comes off nice and easily. So we're really done up underneath the hood here, besides hooking up the battery whenever we are ready. Let's head inside and continue running our power wire towards the trunk area. So 
So we just continue tucking our power wire. Now these panels do pop up. You saw us do it up in the front just to give you a little bit of space. But we followed went up along up underneath the seat into the back. And at this point we've actually pulled the back apart. Now there is a false floor that we've removed. A spare tire, factory sub. That wire right there is our factory sub connection which will tap in for our signal for our amplifier. But with the tire out we actually also remove the foam and we're going to put our amplifier back here and we'll show you what that looks like here in a moment and our power wire comes out there we have a wire ferrule on there and then for our ground we took this panel off and this is actually a factory stud when you take that off it's an unpainted surface there it's a 10 millimeter and that's where we're going to put our ground we're going to fish that up underneath as well and that's also going to go there because again we're going to put our aftermarket amplifier right above our factory one and we'll show you what that looks like here in a moment but that takes care of our ground there's power from the battery next is we need to run our speaker wire and we also need to tap into this subwoofer output from our bose amp because we're going to use a line out converter there to also provide that signal to our amplifier so it knows what to play Additionally, that line-out converter will generate our remote turn-on wire, so it'll trigger our amplifier to turn on when the Bose amp turns on, when all the other, other audio equipment turns on as well. So at this point of time, let's start hooking up our amplifier, and then we're going to focus on our line-out converter. actually did some modifications to the this plastic um, sub support it looks like foam but it's actually more so plastic um, or really 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 dense foam and so what we did is we cut to enlarge in the hole that was here just a little uh, cubby if you will and then we put a piece of ABS plastic up underneath the amplifier to fit that location perfectly and it's wedged in there and then we'll have our amplifier screwed to that plastic so it's not going anywhere and then we made our connections to the amplifier and then we have our RCAs going through a hole down below and they come out here so we got a remote turn on the wire for the amplifier RCAs from the amplifier so we uh, made some good progress this should have still enough ventilation between the jack and spare tire and the uh, top cubby doesn't sit totally flush on top of this so amplifier should still stay pretty decently cool and uh, at the same point remain nice and hidden and uh, also easily accessible okay so at the bench now we're going to talk about this line out converter this essentially is going to convert the factory speaker signal into something that our amplifier can read now what's also cool about this guy is not only does it um, provide that RCA output for our amplifier and it will automatically generate a remote turn on to trigger your aftermarket amplifier to turn on now you'll in order for that that feature to work you'll have to hook it up to power and ground which is the yellow and the black so what we've done here is we've begun preparing our harnesses so we got yellow black and blue so yellow is your constant which we'll find there in the trunk area what we also did is we just add a little inline fuse there and we've soldered that on and we'll cover it in heat shrink just extending that wire black is a ground and we're going to ground it at the same location as our amplifier so we have a little ring terminal that will ground that there and then remote turn on will connect it to the remote turn on wire, run this to the remote input of our amplifier. Now our speaker wire inputs are grays and whites. Um, both pair here have a corresponding black wire and that black wire is gonna be your negative wire. Now since we're technically only doing a mono amplifier, we can bind both negatives and both positives together to our speaker wire and we're going to run this down to where the factory sub is and tap into the positive and negative wire of our factory sub so this speaker wire is going to feed our line out converter the signal it needs in order to produce the rca output and generate a remote turn on wire so we're going to go ahead and button up this harness here move our heat shrink up and over those connections we're going to test the tape this harness and uh, go get it installed. So what we've done here at this point is got our line out converter installed. Now what we did with that ground is we grounded it right there. Same stud as our amplifier. Power 
this in this loom here there's a red with a yellow stripe it's a thicker wire that is a constant 12 volt which we hooked our wire to we just stripped the shielding back and soldered onto it there and we'll cover that in some electrical tape and relume it in tessa tape so that covers power and ground remote turn on wire we just connected it into our lead that goes to our remote input on the amplifier then finally our speaker leads go down up underneath they come out here and same thing we, what we've done is we've tapped into positive and negative positive is going to be your red with a white stripe negative is going to be your brown with a white stripe uh, we soldered onto that again we're not breaking the wire we just strip the shielding back with some wire strippers there and solder onto that wire directly now we're going to cover those connections in some electrical tape if you don't want to solder on you can probably use some t-taps those work as well but we wanted a good solid connection so we're going to clean up all our wiring here get everything zip tied we're going to reloom our harnesses here and start preparing to tune our amplifier with our amplifier now hooked up we hooked up our positive and negative now we can go ahead and put the cover back over the battery and be done under so the hood. everything back into place here Got our line out converter all connected, power ground, speaker wire. We reloomed our speaker harness. And really, at this point in time, we just gotta reconnect our sub. We just set our gains with an SMD DD1 right there. And uh, basically, it's all tuned to the factory radio. So at this point in time, what we're gonna do now is go ahead and reassemble everything and hear how it sounds. All right, we got our subs in. 12 inch pioneers in this supported box all reassembled all nice and clean nice thing is you don't ever see the amplifier and it's easy to get to just by pulling out the box and removing the false floor that's about it for this install if you have any questions on what we did here go ahead and post a comment below be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw and don't forget to subscribe we post great content on the channel all the time we'll see you in the next video